In this example, we're looking for the area between x equals 2y minus y squared and x equals y squared minus 4y. And this is probably unlike anything you've done, maybe ever, and the problem is that we have to graph these functions of y, which is very unusual. Usually we graph y as a function of x. So we need to think carefully about how to graph these, and once we draw the picture, the rest of the setup won't be too bad, and the actual integration won't be very hard at all. But in this case, we definitely will need to integrate in terms of y. But the first problem is to draw the picture to be able to graph these two functions. To do this, we need to recognize something about the structure of these functions. And both of these, you should be able to tell, will have a, the shape of a parabola. Right, so you have a y squared in each of them. So if these functions were y equals 2x minus x squared and y equals x squared minus 4x, you would hopefully know how to graph those without too much trouble. But the fact that we flipped x and y makes things a lot more complicated. However, recognizing that they're parabolas gives us at least a place to start. Because one way to graph a parabola is to find the intercepts. Now, if it's written in terms of y equals, say, 2x minus x squared instead, you would set that equal to zero to find the x-intercepts, the x values here where this equals zero. We're going to do the same kind of thing here, except flipping things around. So we have x equals 2y minus y squared. If we set that equal to zero, we can solve to find the y values where x is zero. In other words, we're going to find the y-intercepts of this parabola. If we factor out a y, we have y times 2 minus y equals zero, which means that y equals zero or two. Now as we start to graph this, this means there are y-intercepts at y equals zero, and at y equals 2. So this is going to be a parabola, and because it's a function of y, the parabola will be turned on its side. So instead of being an upward-facing parabola or a downward-facing parabola, it will be a parabola that opens to the right or opens to the left. So the picture will look either like this or like this. And we have to figure out which of those two is the correct picture. If you think back to parabolas you're familiar with, you can think about the direction that it opens in depends on the sign of A, the sign of the y squared term. In our case, that's negative. So if this were oriented up or down, that would be a downward facing parabola. The same kind of thing holds here, except that positive means it faces to the right, negative means it faces to the left. So in our case, the one we're looking for is the one that opens quote unquote downward, meaning it opens to the negative side. So that's the function x equals 2y minus y squared. It's a parabola that opens to the negative side and has y intercepts at 0 and 2. And once we've done that, the other one is very similar. We're going to set x equals y squared minus 4y equal to 0 and then solve for y again. So when we factor out y we have y times y minus 4 equals 0 so we have y intercepts of 0 and 4. That means the other y intercept for this one is up at 4 and for this one again we want to figure out which direction it opens in this case, the y squared term is positive, meaning it opens up or to the right in this case. It opens toward the positive side. So it looks more or less like this. So there's our two functions that we've graphed. It's a little harder to do when they're functions of y, but if you just think carefully and apply the things you know with functions of x, with a little bit of ingenuity, you can graph these without too much trouble. 
Now when we look for the area between them, what we're looking for is this area right here that's enclosed between those two functions. So in terms of what we've done to this point, we know that we're going to think about splitting this into small horizontal rectangles with a thickness delta y, which in our integral will turn into dy. So we'll need the integral of something dy. And the question is, what goes inside the integral? Remember, that's always the larger function minus the smaller function. And in terms of y, with rectangles drawn horizontally, we need the function that's further to the right minus the function further to the left. And remember the one on the left is y squared minus 4y. So the rightmost function on the region we're looking for is 2y minus y squared. And the left function is the y squared minus 4y. So that's what the integral will look like. We subtract the larger function minus the smaller function. The only thing that's left is to find the limits of integration. Now it should be clear that one place where they intersect is down here at y equals zero. The only other thing we need is the y value of this intersection point. So we need to find where they intersect on the upper side. To do that, we're gonna do just like we did with functions earlier. We set them equal to each other so we'll say y squared minus 4y equals 2y minus y squared. And then, just like any quadratic equation, we solve this by moving everything to one side. So we'll add y squared on both sides and subtract 2y. At this point, we can factor, but 2y factors out. And we find that y equals 0, which we already knew, and y equals 3. So that means the upper limit of integration will be y equals 3. To finish the problem, we just have to integrate, which is pretty straightforward. We can simplify inside the integral by combining like terms. So we have negative 2y squared plus 6y. Pay attention to the negative signs. That's one little area where you can get tripped up. But otherwise, everything's pretty straightforward. Integrating negative 2y squared, you get negative 2 thirds y cubed. Integrating 6y, you get 3y squared. And then we apply the limits of integration from 0 to 3. So I won't show all the details here because I believe you can carry out this arithmetic. Notice that when you plug in the lower limit of 0, everything evaluates to 0. That's not always true, so be careful with that, but in this case it does turn into zero. And your final answer should be nine. So the hard part of this one was really drawing the picture and then setting up the integral as always, but it follows the pattern of all the others where we can find the intersection point by setting them equal to each other and solving. It's just that when it came to graphing them, that took a little bit more thought and effort than graphing more familiar ones. So you can use this one as a pattern when you're given two functions, both as x equals a function of y.